And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going back to Fire Oni. I, I still can't believe the name is actually Fire Oni. That, that just, uh, it's too perfect. All right, we want to come back here and colonize this place. And I've been examining this area and I'm thinking here is our best bet. If we can remove this magma, we have a nice big area with backing in behind it. The problem is if we have to import all our backing plates, as in if we try to use, where is it? Great utilities. Drywall. Drywall is 400 kilos of material to try and blot out the space area. It just is going to cost us so much mass. We'd have to ship in, like the amount of shipping we'd have to do is incredible. And if we want to turn the magma into material, you know, it, it's just really complicated. So we have a rocket loaded up. This one here. This beauty has been doing as well for a while, but we've still loaded it up with a tons of stuff. Obsidian, igneous rock, acorns, some aluminum, steel, glass, plastic. Yeah, this, this rocket maybe weighs, like I'd say it weighs a ton, but that would be a lie. It weighs an awful lot more than that. This rocket is what's going to carry us all the way there. The distance to fire on is just borderline. We'll make it, but only just. Uh, let's launch those now. Acknowledge warnings, launch, off they go. All right. We've also loaded up with a bunch of wood so that we can actually have enough fuel to get back. Uh, they already claimed the beds. Let's make sure they claim the dining tables as well. They're going to be living in here until we run out of uh, oxygen. Well, we'll bring them back before that happens. So up here we have a storage bin full of oxalite. This used to be on the ground floor, but I've made a few minor modifications. The reason being the oxalite when it was on the ground floor, every time this carbon dioxide patch would go past it, every time they breathe out, a little bit of carbon dioxide would pass over this container. And then the oxalite would say, oh, the pressure is below two kilos, and it would vent a bunch of oxygen into the room and destroy the carbon dioxide. Downside to that was it overpressurized the room, which is why the oxygen pressure in here is 16.5 kilos. So we moved it up here, that stuff happening, pressure stabilized, everything's good. And hopefully the oxygen pressure will now keep going down and they won't have popped eardrums forever. Uh, we've only given them two atmosuit docks and, ooh, the background just changed. Well, we've given them two atmosuit docks, we're only going to have two of them getting out of here at a time. They've got their own toilet, about 20 tons of dirt to feed it with, and about 13 kilos of bleach stone. But considering how little they use, there should be plenty for our needs. Alright, let's skip this forward until we get to fire Oni and see how this works out. Ooh, I might want to land them at this platform. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, before we let any of you go outside, we're going to deconstruct that. And once that's deconstructed, we are going to construct ourselves a little Atmosuit dock exit. Just so that you have somewhere to get at, well, just so that two of them can exit the ship without causing any problems. What we learned from last time is, do not put the Atmosuit dock exit right here. If you do, they basically don't switch in, but they seem to teleport from here. So yeah, we can only get two people out. I was going to try and redesign the whole thing to have the Atmosuit docks further back up, but I think think this should work. All right, with that done, can they actually exit is the question. A uh, simple way to test, actually. Let's see if they'll try and pour some magma in here. Well, they seem to be exiting the ship. Uh, first thing we want to do is hook up the gas just so that they can, yeah, just so that we can fuel the ship up and make sure we have a way out of here if things go badly wrong. Uh, oh, why are you delivering the steel in there? You know what? It's fine. Steel can go there. We're going to need it for this planet anyway. All right, I think... I think what we're going to try and do is just hollow out a bit of space here and put in a steam turbine. And the steam turbine's job will be to cool down the magma so we can turn it into igneous rock so that we have more building materials. I'd like to sort of use as much of the natural planet if we possibly could, just because otherwise it feels like we're importing everything we need, which we kind of are, but we want to have some integrity here. Uh, first thing we're going to do though is we're going to get rid of this magma over here just to help ourselves out. Then that should give us just about enough space to squeeze in it. Yep, that's right. Stand right inside the magma. We didn't bring any medical beds for you. You're just going to have to walk that one off. Uh, remind me not to do that again. Hopefully they won't do that again. Uh, next up. Oh, I think we can dig that down a little bit. That magma there, we can't mop it up, unfortunately. But I think once we get it down a tad, we can just stick a little pitcher pump on top of it. There we go. And then we can get rid of it that way. I keep forgetting how ridiculous this is. I remember the first time I saw this happening, I was like, wait, you, you can do that? I didn't I didn't even consider this a possibility. You, you sort of assume, yeah, no, there's no way you can pump magma with, uh, you know, pitcher pumps and bottle emptiers. But once you once you get the hang of it, you're like, you know what? This is awesome. All right, we'll just uh, skip this forward a little bit while we clean up this area. With that mess mainly dealt with, uh, there's one last thing I want to get rid of. Actually, one second, we'll get rid of these buildings. Uh, we've got a problem over here with all of these resources sitting on top of this obsidian. It seems to be, well, dumping heat into them. 
So I think what we'll do is we'll move them all up here, put them on some insula details and keep them out of the way. This magma down here we're going to have to, well, convert or do something with. How is sand existing down there? You know what? Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We are going to tidy up this area and build ourselves a steam turbine, which means we're going to have to ship over some water as well, but, you know, that's on the agenda. We're going to get that done. One thing we also need to do is build ourselves a sunshade. Uh, reason being, our duplicates are getting sunstroke a lot. Um, well, sunburnt. It's just the way it is out here. So what we'll do is we'll build a big bunch of solar panels across the top. We took along about two tons of glass, so we can build ten of them, but uh, I can't really build any further across here without causing the rockets to be walled in. I wonder if the rockets can fly through them. It's something I should probably test later, but right now, we're, we're, on a, we're on a clock here. We have a limited supply of oxygen, and we need to make sure we don't run out of it. What are we at here? 11 kilos per tile, and we've got 10 tons of this stuff sitting in storage. I think we'll be fine for a little while longer. We now have a sunshade successfully installed. We can also use that for power at a later date. Now, down here, hmm, how much space can we squeeze out of this? You see, we want to stick in a steam turbine. Uh, but we're going to need at least three tiles below it. Hmm, yeah, we're still going to have to wall in some areas, aren't we? Let me think about this for a minute. This, uh, this whole area up here, though, has to go. Change in plan. I realize this is going to take so long to do, like to drain all of this, that we might want to leave ourselves some space up here so we can build a base. Uh, in that case, we're going to make our magma to igneous rock converter over here. This could take a lot of resources. It's 400 kilos for each one of those insulated tiles. We're going to have to put in backing plates behind all of here. This, this is going to be expensive. Oh, that reminds me, I want to get rid of some of these alerts. Uh, the food alert, no thank you. We, we don't need that anymore. Thank you, goodbye. Uh, max stress, yes, entombed. Breathability, no, don't care if they can't breathe. None of them can breathe out here. There's no oxygen on this entire map. Here is where things get expensive. That is a lot of drywall. In fact, we burn through most of our igneous rock doing the drywall up here. And we have to use obsidian down here because we're going to be pouring magma in this section. Uh, also, we're going to have to remove a tile here and, you know what, get rid of that storage bin. We're going to have to pour some water in here once we get water in from the home planet. Which reminds me, I need to go back. We've half set that up already. If we go back here to Stinkum, the rocket over here is full of petroleum, unfortunately, at the moment. Where is it? Yep, it is full of petroleum, but next in line is water. We've siphoned that off uh, the feed to the petroleum planet. So this, we can immediately, we'll send it. We'll get it to dump off the petroleum, we'll find a use for that later, and then we'll send it back here to get more water. Who to pilot it though? Getting those rockets to provide water here is going to take a while. I just had them send over and drop off the petroleum we're going to need for later, but it's two more routes. We're going to need about a ton of water in here. So we're going to be waiting a while. I thought we'd take advantage of one of the things suggested in the comments, and that was dig down through here. There is a way to get down here, and we don't really have to do... Well, we don't have to worry about letting the magma in, so if we do this just right... We should be able to dig out a whole bunch of this place. In fact, uh, let's maybe put in some ladders here as well. Obsidian ladders? Yes, very much so. And if we do it just right, we should be able to get all the way down to the core here and core ourselves out a nice open area for the base. We'll have to make massive vacuum gaps to make sure the place doesn't get cooked, but it should be possible. Oh, finally some good news. This has arrived. Though I somehow messed up and it's got 10 kilos of petroleum. I think there was a little backup in the system, but that's fine. We'll just empty storage and drop it on top of here. Now I made sure to put some insulated tiles here. We didn't want the water instantly flashing. We'll empty the storage there. Uh, this is set to polluted water, but I think we'll get rid of the polluted water for now and we'll switch it to straight water. Reason for the polluted water is occasionally they're, well, they're messing up in here. I don't know why. This is set to really high priority, but somehow they sometimes forget to fill it. Oh, and this system in here is working out amazingly well. Uh, just just have a quick go over how we're stopping them from choking to death on their own fumes and how we're keeping them oxygenated. Now we've got the oxide in here. This off gases into the room and provides the oxygen. However, they are breathing out carbon dioxide and every time the atmosphere come back in, they dump out all the carbon dioxide they've collected. But that carbon dioxide floats around the bottom and when the gas suits are running low, which is pretty much every time they come back, what happens is the gas pump kicks in. Now, I don't know if you've covered this last time, but the gas pumps, there's this little filter system here, this powerless filter that uh, uh, scoops out the carbon dioxide. Now remember, save game files are always attached if you want to just pull this out yourself. So all we're doing is we're siphoning out the carbon dioxide and it flows down this gas pipe on the pipe to nowhere. 
and it just sort of sits here. This is basically like a giant storage tank. You got to imagine each one of these is worth one kilo of one kilo of gas. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It's we can hold about the same amount as an entire gas tank, but it costs us no space. It's a spaceless way of storing it. As well as that, Fruit Loops is a plumber, which means if we want to, we can get Fruit Loops to extract the pipe contents, and he can start dumping that stuff out into literal gas canisters. So theoretically, this, this we could sort of never run out of space for the carbon dioxide. We'll just keep pulling it out of the pipes. Just a, a nice way to keep yourself safe from any carbon dioxide poisoning that might happen. Though, oh, yeah, the odd pee they do in here is causing polluted oxygen. The polluted oxygen is getting sucked up as well, and it's damaging these atmosphere docks, which need to be repaired with gold. We took along a couple of tons. We should be fine, though. That will eventually become a problem. And why do we have no power? How do we have no power? Uh, you know what? We'll put that on 70 70%. I need to change around people's priorities, don't I? Quick adjustment to uh, a few of the stats, or uh, the priorities, and hopefully they'll at least keep this place powered. Excellent, because it would be bad if people couldn't come in and out of here. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, wait, yeah, we should send that guy home. Uh, they're going to break if we keep them here much longer. What's their... how are they doing? Yeah, we should send you back. Your stress levels are about to go through the roof. Though I'm afraid you're going to have to wait a minute. I forgot to fuel you. Don't worry, don't worry, we got power here. It will be fine. It'll just take 200 seconds, which you probably don't have. Uh, over here, we're still digging away, and we've almost scooped this out. I'm beginning to think, instead of waiting for this to clear, we can just dump that magma down here and build on top of it. We'll just flood it down the bottom. We, we can scoop out a big chunk here, and if we can get rid of all that magma and get this space free, we can build ourselves a little habitat to keep a duplicate alive in here, a permanent resident of this fire planet. That is actually quite a decent-sized chunk of space to have cored out. I think we can get a decent base in here. We've got enough arbor acorns that we can plant a few trees, maybe set up an ethanol refinery. Hmm. You know what, I'll have to think about it a lot more. We're going to have to drop all this magma down here, and I think we're going to try and excavate out as much space as we can. Though soon we'll have a second rocket full of water, and that will allow us to fire up the steam turbine, which means we can start producing igneous rock out of this magma, which means we can start actually draining this pool. Hmm. Let's see what happens when the next uh, batch of water arrives. Time to let some of this magma loose. I think we can squeeze out a bit more space here if we peel off the bottom layer. Though this is going to be one of those dangerous scenarios where you wish you... Probably wish you hadn't done it after you... Well, after you do it, you're going to wish you hadn't done it. Uh, I think we can... No, no, we can't get that one. That one there. Before we can finish this off, our rocket has arrived. We've got the last section of water we're going to need. We're going to have a ton of water for this. However, there was one last thing we want to do when we brought in here. We also brought in a uh, 1,200 kilos of thermium. We're going to need that for the aqua tuner we want to build here. And I think we'll let Weaver maybe be stop and grab a snack while they're here, just to keep them from, you know, going crazy on the way home. We have sent Weaver on their way. Hopefully they don't crack before they get home, though they're hitting about 70% stress sometimes. I, I really should come with a better rocket for delivering water. Okay, we have got the, kilo, the ton of water in here, though we're going to have to bring them back for one last trip because we want to install this aqua tuner here. Uh, 1,200 kilos, and then we're going to need a cooling loop for it, which will require, well, polluted water. Maybe we should have saved all that urine, but though, in all fairness, I, I don't think there would have been enough to fill the loop. Now, let's see how we're going to rotate this through. Also, yeah, it, we're going to have to um, mm, rotate some water through here, and, or liquids through here to cool it, and we're going to have to put in a gas as well. I suppose we could put some petroleum on the floor. Actually, that might be a better idea. You know what? Let's just see what we come up with. After I put in the cooling solution, I realized, well, we're going to need to power it. And then I'm like, well, in that case, we better just hook up the solar to it. So we're going to need a battery box to go with the solar to keep the power up during the night. Which means we're going to need to cool down the battery box as well, which means we're going to need even more polluted water. Uh, has our fellow made it home yet? How you doing? No, Weaver is... How's their stress levels looking? Pretty nasty, but not the worst. And they've got enough calories. They should make it home without uh, hopefully having a mental break. Yeah, yeah, they'll be fine. What, 47 seconds? No time at all. But, uh, yeah, back on... Fire only. Yeah, we really have to make some changes here. We really have to... Well, we're going to have to put in a cooling loop here to keep this cool, which means an awful lot more polluted water. This here is going to have to be pressurized, as in this area here in here is going to have to be filled with the gas. And what I think I'm going to do is put a little layer of petroleum right here. If we put a little layer of petroleum, it won't flood the steam turbine, but it will give a good conductive surface for the coolant to go through. Now, we don't want a lot. We put in too much, we flood it. So, uh, how many kilos are in there? 200 kilos. Let's make it... Yeah, I think that is plenty. So, we'll stop you there. 
boom, and we have a little layer, steam turbine's not flooded, and now we can wall this sucker in. Now, when it comes to walling this in, before we do, there's a couple of things we want to do, we'll deconstruct that. And I think we'll get all that stuff out of the way. In fact, we'll put in a, a door here. Door installed. This entire place is now airtight. It's time to pressurize it. Oh, and this always comes up. Mesh tiles, nope. That back, they technically have backing plates. There was a, an old version of this where backing plates were required behind mesh tiles to stop gas escaping into the vacuum of space, but they got rid of it. People were abusing it to provide more thermal mass to things, and uh, they were like, you know what, it's just simpler. So airflow tiles and mesh tiles don't allow gas to pass through them into the background of space. I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's just the way it is. Now, if we're going, we're going to go over here and we're going to go to consumable ore. Oh, we're going to set this to 64 kilos. And then we are going to fill this up with oxalate. Ooh, well, we're going to make that a level 9. The reason for that is that should provide exactly enough to pressurize this up to 2 kilos. Well, I think it only goes up to 1.8, but there's 46 tiles there. There is 18 tiles there. That's 64 tiles. Double that. That's 128 if everything goes up to two kilos of pressure. It really is, realistically though, it only goes up to, uh, was it 1.8? So I think we'll get away just fine with that. How much we got left? We got 7.8 tons and we'll make you a level eight. That way people will actually bring it. Now, the moment they fill that, we are going to get that duplicate out of there and then we're going to close the doors. We don't want them, uh... yeah, that's fine. Now you can get back out, but you can't get back in. Go on, get out. And done. Oh, and this one here, no one's allowed in or out. I probably should have done that before. <laughs> Let's check the gas overlay. And would you look at that? Already starting to pressurize up. That will take a little time. But perfection. Now we just got to wait on our travel buddy. And I got here, someone's bringing in a layer of polluted water. That polluted water we are going to dump straight into our cooling loop. Now our cooling loop goes through here. We've even got a little bit of a... This Basically, we'll dump in the polluted water here and it'll get added to the cooling loop. While we're waiting for all of that to pressurize and to happen, what we'll do is we'll go down here and we will finish off what we started. This is uh, yeah, a little risky, but I think it's worth the space it gain. Well, we've managed to clear out the bottom of the map and give ourselves a bit of space, but I think it's time we dropped all this magma now. Uh, hmm. Considering how viscous it is, we might want to sort of spread out the drop a little bit. I think we'll start here. Uh, we'll keep it all to the left-hand side as much as possible. So yeah, let's just take out those two parts and see if it... You know what? Let's just make it one part. We'll take out one part and see how that does. We don't want our dupes uh, taking any lava baths. They have a tendency to uh, do stupid stuff. Yeah, perfectly normal day. Perfectly normal. What? What? What do you think you're doing? No! Just... No! Leave it! We don't need the resources that badly! <laughs> oh my god! And why did you get that earlier before we started pouring magma there? Ah... Uh, duplicates. Alright, well, uh, we'll clean that up. That worked out pretty well. Maybe we'll leave this stuff. That gives us actually a nice rectangular area to work in. We can, we can scoop that bit out. Alright, I think the reason they were trying to pick up uh, resources from there was there was a ladder segment that could reach it. So when we chopped down some chunks, they fell down there. That's why they were going for a swim. I uh, removed the ladder segment and since we've been safe. Now I'm thinking what we do is we just wall in across here with insulated tiles and that will seal us away from the magma. Then we can make a core base in here with about three stories high, maybe make them, well yeah, three stories high, but maybe make it three tile high rooms or something like that. We don't need anything too impressive. We just need a small base. So we're probably gonna need four tile high rooms for the trees. Yeah, this is going to get awkward. This, I think, yeah, I think we can scoop most of this out. We can dump it into our steam turbine section, though I think we can drop that a tile or two, can we? Hmm. Actually, yeah, I think I kind of overbuilt this just slightly. Okay, we'll get back to the purpose of this in a minute. We're still waiting on another load of polluted water for this. Uh, up here, yep, yeah, I put in 64 instead of 128. My, uh, my bad. I'm gonna have to get someone back in there and we're gonna do some oxygen. We'll, we'll put that up to something like, mm. Well, we're gonna need another 64 kilos plus what we lose, so let's make that, well, 80 kilos. We got some spare O2 lying around. Oh, and that reminds me, I should probably do something here about the carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is, uh, our storage tank is starting to fill. And I've realized where all of that polluted oxygen is coming from. The toilets. Yes, the outhouse is putting out polluted dirt, and the polluted dirt is emitting polluted oxygen. That's what's causing our, our problems with this. I think what we can do is, we can move this toilet up uh, one level. So if we put tiles there, we can put the toilet up one level, and then we can stick a deodorizer down here. In fact, let's do that now. I think we could, we have the supplies with us, though I don't think we have the sand. Wait, do we have the sand? I think we got about a ton of sand somewhere. 
We don't need that much anyway. Um, you deconstruct that. Oh, this is going to be slightly risky. I don't want any of you trying to go to the bathroom right now. Oh, and this outhouse you're building, please use the igneous rock from inside the ship. I would, I would prefer if you did that. That would be good. If you use the igneous rock from outside the ship, you might start cooking the place. I would not like that. Uh, we're looking. No temperatures remaining stable, so they used decent stuff. Grand. Then all we do is deconstruct this. Uh, we'll deconstruct that as well. We don't need either of those. And then hopefully we can just squeeze in a little deodorizer, though. Will will they be able to reach it? Uh, you know what? We'll make it out of igneous rock. We'll stick it right there. Oh, going to require power as well. We'll use a little bit of gold wire. Uh, hopefully they can reach that. Can they? Okay, they can. Nice. Okay, now we're using even more space. Now, is someone going to actually bring that filtration medium? Oh god, the filtration medium is going to be boiling. Uh, is it? How bad is this going to be? A thousand degrees. Okay, um... How bad is this going to be? Yeah, it's slowly venting heat. That's... We might have to get rid of that stuff. No, no. Damn it, I'm thinking should we just dump the sand and create some new one? We can smash up some rocks and that should reset the temperature. Hmm, let me think for a moment. Oh, hell no. I, I just saw it destroy a puff of polluted oxygen and a massive burst of heat just came out of it. That sand is just way too hot. We need to... Uh, we need to deconstruct that. And then we need to go outside and we need to find something to put it in. Uh, you. Uh, cons filtration medium. Sand. Go for it. Now, once that's deconstructed, we're going to immediately have to get that sand out of here before we cook the entire ship. Thank you. Quick, get out of here. Temperature-wise, what did that do to our heat? Jesus! The only thing that's keeping us from overheating here is the 7.4 tons of 15 degree oxalate. Is that off gas as it cools down the area? That was the entire plan of the oxalate. So the oxalate keeps us cool. But we are going to want some sand. If you want to make sure we don't end up with any more of that polluted oxygen causing us issues... Ooh, that is, and, oh, we also want to do a little bit of drainage here. We're going to have uh, Fruit Loops do a little bit of an extraction there. And you can see that thing's all flowing down. They're ripping out the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide just pools there. Perfect. Now we just, we, we could use that to fuel the ship. Um, uh, what was our next plan? Ah, yes, we're going to brick in down here. We just got to get rid of these last traces of magma to clean, make this place safe. Uh, so to do that, we're just going to put down some obsidian temperature shift plates. They'll reset to 40 degrees when they spawn, and they should have enough uh, mass in them to drain all the heat out of the, the magma that's left behind. At the same time, we've launched our next rocket full of polluted water. At that point, we should have enough coolant to start this up, and then we can just start disposing of magma regularly. What the? Seriously? How are you guys so hot already? That's impossible. You should reset. Oh, unless they fixed it. No, we're we're stealing a bunch of heat out of these things. 1473, let's say. So you're at 1473, and then, yep, yeah, you plummet down. But, hmm. Okay, maybe we need to do one more round of these, but it sort of works. Pity, pity we can't mop this stuff. We managed to mop some of the magma, but not enough. Right, done. Oh god, I just cannot wait to start up this cooling loop. This is going to be our lifeline. We're also going to end up running this lo cooling loop down here at some point as well to keep our living areas cool and keep the trees uh, alive. But, oh. Is that a rocket? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, we want you to empty storage. Oh, thanks for the tip in the comments about this. I forgot you could just empty storage instead of deconstructing the liquid carbon tank. Just hit empty. Done. And uh, what's that set to? That's set to level 9. Yeah, go take care of that immediately. Otherwise, it starts to evaporate into space with all of that polluted oxygen. Uh, fill it up. We need this loop up and running as soon as possible. One good thing to note, I've discovered that if I let Weaver out of the ship while they're uh, on this planet, as in I just set this to all, and this ship is also set to all, They'll actually go inside and use the bathroom, meaning they don't uh, pee in their suit, which causes them horrible problems. As well as that, they can wash their hands, and can they grab a snack? Yep, okay, sure they have to sit on the floor and eat without a table. But this isn't RimWorld. This doesn't cause them to go absolutely crazy. Once they've grabbed a quick snack, we'll send them on their way again. Yep, no one's liking that food. Unfortunately, I didn't check, and it's got a lot of food poisoning germs on it. So, let's just say there's been a, a few instances of food poisoning. Um, I'm not going to... Let, let's not point any fingers. Right, just, uh, but it's happened. Uh, we'll send them back to their ship now. We'll crew them up. Uh, we've got to make sure they don't mess up our, uh, or where is it? If we go in here, we've got to make sure they don't mess up this suit system. So we're going to have to have another suit delivered. Oh, God damn it. I wish, I really wish they'd fix that because it's becoming very annoying. 
There we go. Sometimes they take a, an already active suit and move it from one rack to the other. It gets really confusing. Yeah, and now we can send this fella back. And how are we looking? How is our cooling loop looking? No, actually, it's full. That's beautiful. Okay, we'll deconstruct that liquid bridge, and I think we'll pump in the last of the water. There's a hundred kilos or so there. That is perfect. In fact, we'll just grab that pipe, continue it on. We'll feed that in so it backs up into the tank. Yeah, that's one thing. If you bridge stuff on, you'll just fill up the loop to exactly what you need. If you don't bridge stuff on and just plow it in directly, it's going to back up or cause the system to back up. So that's why you need a liquid reservoir. We bridged on because we weren't thinking, and now, uh, yeah, now now we're going to remember to move it all over. Uh, this is crewed up. Everything's ready to go. We're going to send you back home. Uh, but before we launch you, we are going to change your landing pad to, where is it, 785. That is the one... Wait, where's the crew? Why can't we launch? Rocket is not ready to launch. Insufficient fuel. Ah, okay, we're not quite there yet. Goodbye, buddy. Thanks for all the help. Uh, there are a couple of things that need to be done before we activate this. Uh, the first is we're going to have to put in a nice heavy wire all the way along here and connect this and get it ready to connect this up. Oh, and only we'll one piece there. We want to make sure this can be instantly connected. At the same point, we are also going to have to open this door so we can let in the oxalite. So we're getting another 80 kilos of oxalite in there. Let's hope they don't abuse that. Just bring the oxalite and fill it up. Actually, I'm going to make this an emergency. Why not? Uh, I rarely use this, but I think this is one of those situations I don't want to waste the oxalite. Come on. How much oxygen are we going to lose? Hopefully not too much. That's fine. Yep. That's good. No one's allowed back in, and we can put that back down to normal quality. Done. Uh, I don't think we lost that much oxygen. We should be fine. Uh, once this power cable is done, we're going to set this up, and we're going to start dumping in... Well, this is going to be our igneous rock creation device, combined with our power supply. First thing we're going to do is set the temperature on this to 20C. Okay, that's rotating. Perfect. That'll start cooling that down. Now we just got to plug this whole sucker in. First though, we want to disconnect a few things. Uh, we're going to disconnect that, and we're going to connect this once that's done. Once that's disconnected, connect that up like that. Boom. All right, one last thing we need to do. We need to plug this in here. So we will say connect those two together. Yep, perfect, and they were actually the same. And done. Deconstruct these. We'll have to do some cleaning up, but that gives us a power supply that is actually cooled and now now we can start playing around with the magma uh over here what we can do is we can go hey magma thank you and we'll enable auto bottle that in fact we're going to try two at a time now i've tested this a little bit on the side but the plan is very simple the magma flows down here this is a diamond temperature shift plate we had 800 kilos of diamond here i can't remember why but we need it for the temperature shift plate okay so the the liquid drops down in here and then diagonally the heat is sucked out of it by this temperature shift plate and dumped into the water in here first step now once the heat is sucked out of it it turns into igneous rock but the igneous rock can't well the igneous rock needs to go somewhere since there's nothing above it it sort of forces it up into the tile above it if we had say this two layers deep and had another tile there and another thing there this is this would be where you normally have the igneous rock coming out diagonally and oh, one thing to note, it always comes out diagonally to the right. You can't make a commit to diagonally to the left unless you block off this side. So I was thinking originally of just shooting out this side here and having a drop down, but no, can't do that. But this way, it just, the igneous rock turns here and then pops up to the top. One thing we could have done is just remove this, put a backing plate in, and then the igneous rock would just stand and sit at the bottom. But I didn't want to do that. The reason being, as we pour more and more magma down, it would cause it to heat up, turn back into liquid, and cause us more problems. So this way, it should turn here, pop up to the top, and the igneous rock on top here should be completely insulated and shouldn't actually turn back into magma. If we left it all at the bottom, there might be a chance that suddenly a few tons of igneous rock would, sit, would turn into magma and then just, you know, cause us problems. As is, though, this seems to be working. What's the temperature in here? Hey, rising, but not too bad. If we've done this right, the thermium aqua tuner can survive up to a thousand degrees. So even if we mess this up, this should be able to provide cooling. The cooling it provides should make sure the steam turbine never overheats, and even if this goes up to like 500 degrees in here, this should be able to eat all the heat out of it, and allowing us to just continuously churn out hundreds of, well, hundreds of kilos of igneous rock all the time. Um, okay, is that all the... I think we got one more bottle in here. Once that bottle is gone, we're going to enable that pitcher pump. Then we're just going to start dumping magma in there pretty much 24-7 all day long. Uh, 400 kilos, yeah, 200 kilos, grand... Seems to be working. Right. Give me a... 
Weaver. Oh, you're back home and I never, I never let you out. Uh, my bad. Sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, you can, you can, you can get out of there. Come on, get out, leave. You finished? Yep, yep. Uh, I've, uh, that's happened enough times now that I've installed this down here. There's a, a fair bit of polluted water there. That is all from Weaver. And there's stress levels there. What are they? 5%? That's actually pretty good. I suppose they did get to eat on the other side so they didn't go crazy. All right, let me play around with this some more and uh, see how much magma we can kick into this before it starts to uh, complain. Well, great. We accidentally created sand. I suppose we overheated the dirt. The polluted water that was in there left a little bit of dirt behind when it evaporated. I think, though, if we delete that tile, we should be able to get out that diagonally. I am not opening that up. There is just no way. There we go. Oh, and not only that, we can get the sand back out. Thank you for the sand. All right, then all we do is we just throw back in a mesh tile and problem solved. Let us steal mesh tile. Yeah. All right. What's the temperature in there? 278. Uh, cooling liquid. How you doing? Cooling liquid's coming back at 26, going out at 13. Yes, yes, this is working. Now let's see how far we can push this before it starts to complain. You, enable that building. We're, we're going to see if we can start producing, mass producing igneous rock. This seems to be working like a champ. It's up to 500 degrees on this side, and the water coming back is just hitting occasionally the actual aqua tuner switches off so even though it's 500 degrees in here and well above what's good for your power production we're, all we really want to do is well just keep converting this magma we can slowly but surely eat it alive all we need to do now is get a living space up we get a living space up for one dupe and then we leave them here with some pitcher pumps and an awful lot of magma and then when we eventually when they're eventually finished there'll be no magma and just a bunch of igneous rock it will take them a long time. There's a bit of a planet to go through, but, I mean, this, this is Ani. You've got time. These dupes are uh, effectively immortal, so long as you don't do something stupid with them. Oh, and down here I've been uh, sort of walling this in to give us just a little bit more space. Diagonally building a few blocks just to force the magma up. Uh, not the worst thing in the world. I think we can actually squeeze this up a little bit more. Just to give us that little bit of extra space to work with. That looks more like an organized living space. Well, starting to. We're going to have to rip out all this stuff, of course, otherwise it will cook it. It's all a thousand degree material. But we have produced an awful lot of igneous rock. We actually now can produce building materials on this planet, which has been, we've had to ship in everything. All of the resources we've got here, we had to ship it in with us. But now that we can actually produce some basic building blocks like igneous rock, it's going to make things a little bit simpler. Uh, we can even wall in a bit of space when we, if we want to. Uh, one thing I should point out, we had, what was it? I think 17 tons of igneous rock before we started this sucker up. Now we're up to 36.6 .6 tons. And the great thing is it converts it at a one-to-one -one ratio, as opposed to mining it out where you destroy half the mass. Plus there's, what, 1,800 kilos of uh, igneous rock per tile, as opposed to, well, whatever. Now, one thing about this, though, I should really point out the heat production. If you look at this steam turbine there, it tells you the heat production is 511 kDTUs. Now, that's, of course, a pointless number. You won't, for most people, that's like, okay, what the hell does that mean? I want to put it in terms of polymer presses like the plastic press if you want to use a plastic press these things are notorious for being very hot and difficult to keep cool they produce 32.5 kilo DTUs of heat this means what this steam, steam turbine is currently producing 15 times the amount of heat of a plastic press so this is 15 plastic presses worth of heat this thing is producing and the reason it is is because 10% of all the heat it destroys comes out the top as heat so the more heat you destroy with this, or the hotter the steam you feed it, the more heat you got to pay for on the other side. And you'll notice here, it's up to, ooh, 738C. I might have to turn off one of these bottle emptiers because that's just getting up there. What's the water coming back at? 21.8, leaving at 8. I think we're good for a while longer. We're good for a while longer. Once we start actually building in here, I think it'll distract the dupes. But I am miles out of time. Sorry that we don't seem to be doing much progress here, but, you know, it's it's a magma planet. It's, things go a little bit slower than normal, plus we're stuck with a very small crew in a very hosp inhospitable environment. Though I will say this, this has worked out a charm. This has kept our dupes safe, alive, and most important, happy. None of them are having mental breaks, they're not stressing out. True, it doesn't come with all the nice amenities, all they get is the mess hall bonus, uh, but we do have that nice food that keeps giving them food poisoning. <laughs> but they at least get to wash their hands, which... It seems it's pointless because they're going to get food poisoning anyway, but I'm not deconstructing that because it's got chlorine in there and we don't want to chlorinate the place. How much chlorine they got left? Uh, enough for another few days. I think I'm going to have to send them back home and uh, maybe have them heal up for a while. It's just they've been, they've been on a long voyage out here, but they have been doing absolutely sterling work out here. Like, this just... Ugh. I can't wait till we actually start producing the trees. We're going to have to 
well, we can dump off the acorns here or just make a, at least a storage area down here that's immune to the heat, though we will have to first deconstruct all the ladders and reconstruct them because some of them got a little bit toasty due to the things they were exposed to during their life cycle. But no, 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 that's for the next episode. For, uh, for the time being, I hope you enjoyed and good luck. Yeah.